Just to be clear, there is no one perfect lens that's gonna meet all of your needs, but if I was gonna choose only one lens for a Sony full frame camera for under $1,000 to make good videos, I would go with this Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. And as I show you why, I'm gonna compare it with this Sigma 28 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens, which is also a good choice to show you why I think this is the best all around lower price lens for video if I'm only choosing one. And I have Amazon and B&H links to both of these lenses in the description. So if you decide to purchase one, it won't cost you anything extra, but it will greatly help out the channel. So when it comes to lenses, there are three main things to consider when making your choice, which are the focal length, the aperture, and the autofocus capabilities. Starting with the focal length, the lower the number, the wider the field of view, and the higher the number, the more narrow the field of view. I like to have a variety of focal lengths when making my film, so a zoom lens is the most convenient. 24, 35, and 50 millimeters are my most used focal lengths, and they're actually the only three that I used when shooting my last short film, Bedtime, that I'll have linked in the description so you can check out how using those various focal lengths contributed to the overall look of the film. And I actually shot that film on a Sony full frame camera. So let me know down in the comments what types of videos you plan on making because that could possibly change my suggestion for you. But with this Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter lens, you get pretty much all those focal lengths combined into a single lens. So this is here, 28 millimeters. We're vlogging just fine. We got the kids all down here, no problem. And even if we go on steady shot to make it even more stable, it still looks good with the little silly girl down there, but there you go, vlogging 28 millimeters, no problem. But you'll also get some extra reach over that 50 millimeters that I like with the 75 millimeter capability of this lens. Now, there are other lenses that give you even more reach like the Sony 24 to 105 F4 lens, but for the extra reach, you'll be making a trade-off for the maximum aperture of the lens. The Sony 24 to 105 millimeter only lets you get down to an aperture of F4, which is still good and will give you a shallow depth of field, but the 28 to 75 millimeter will give you a maximum aperture of f2.8 that gives an extra stop of light as well as an even shallower depth of field. And if you don't know what I mean by stops of light, I have another video that'll help you understand how exposure works, linked in the description as well. An important thing to keep in mind is that both of these lenses give you a maximum aperture of f2.8 throughout the entire zoom range of the lens. Unlike cheaper kit lenses like the Sony 28 to 60 millimeter that starts out at f4 at 28 millimeters, but but as you zoom in to 60 millimeters, you have to go all the way up to f5.6 on the aperture, which is very limiting on your creativity. The lower the maximum aperture of the lens, the shallower you can make the depth of field, which gives you a lot more control over the style of your shots. Another reason why this lower aperture is important is because of the low light capabilities. A full frame camera with its larger sensor has much larger pixels and will give you a lot cleaner images than something like an APS-C or Micro Four Thirds camera will at higher ISO settings. So even with the ISO at 1600 when at f2.8, the large full frame sensor of the FX3 gives you a very clean image in a low light setting. If you can only go down to f4 like on that 24 to 105 millimeter, you'll have to push the ISO to 3200 for the same exposure. But if you're limited to f5.6, like that 28 to 60 millimeter kit lens, the ISO is all the way up to 6400 for the same exposure, which begins to introduce a lot more noise and less color accuracy on your video. The FX3 and A7S3 have some of the best low light performance around, making the image still look good at higher ISO settings like 6400 and above. But when using a camera like the a7 III or a7C with a higher pixel count, the low light performance isn't as good and you'll start getting a lot more noise at those higher ISO settings. So regardless of the camera I'm using, having the option of getting all the way down to f2.8 is a definite must for me in choosing a zoom lens for filmmaking because I still wanna get the cleanest image possible in camera. And the last thing to make sure is that the lens has great autofocus capabilities because starting out, chances are, you're gonna be filming everything yourself or even filming yourself in your videos. So good autofocus is a must. One of my favorite ways to test a lens's autofocus is to do a dolly zoom test because if the camera can stay locked onto someone's face while moving and zooming, then you know it's a good lens. So you can see here when paired with the FX3, the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter works great during a dolly zoom and it even stayed locked on pretty well when I began moving the camera back and forth really fast during my tests. However, the Sigma 28 to 70 millimeter didn't perform quite as well during the test. After a few takes and trying to move more slowly, I was able to get a usable shot that was mostly in focus, 
but when moving faster, the Sigma lens just could not keep up. However, something to keep in mind here is that the lens's autofocus capability is only going to be as good as the camera's autofocus system. And the FX3 has a really good autofocus system, so the Sigma lens was definitely the weak link in this test. But if you have any Sony full frame camera that's a Mark III or above, they all have good autofocus systems, so you should get similar performance with either of these lenses if you go for one of those. But if you have something older like the A7S Mark II that I used to use with only the contrast based autofocus, then you're probably not going to get very good performance out of either of these lenses. I also like to test out the touch autofocus and both lenses had similar performance with no noticeable hunting in my touch autofocus test for racking focus between multiple objects. But once again, keep in mind that this is based on cameras with good autofocus systems. And when testing the autofocus tracking, neither lens had any problems staying locked on to me when walking around or adjusting focus when moving quickly into and out of the frame. The Tamron and Sigma seem to be about equal on their focusing speed with locking on to me, but depending on the type of camera you have, you can also adjust the lock on and transition speeds of your focus, racking, and tracking settings. And just to make it clear, prime lenses will be sharper and more color accurate than a zoom lens in most cases but they're also typically more expensive and you have the inconvenience of always having to carry around multiple lenses and changing them all the time. For example, getting the Sigma 24, 35, and 50 millimeter f1.4 lenses will cost you $2,550. And if you go with the Sony versions of those same lenses, it's gonna be almost $5,000. Whereas the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 is less than half of that at $900, while giving you that further reach of 75 millimeters, as well as the ability to do effects such as the dolly zoom, or even a quick zoom in on characters such as in this setting. So even though both lenses seem to have the same quality on almost all the tests, I'd have to go with the Tamron because of the better performance in the dolly zoom test. Plus you get that extra 75 millimeter reach over the 70 millimeters of the Sigma. But if you don't think you'll be needing the better autofocus capability for those more unique types of video moves like the dolly zoom or the extra reach, then the Sigma is still a great choice that will save you about $100. But if you have any questions about either of these lenses that I discussed today, post them down in the comments and I'll try to answer your questions and help you out there. But if this video is helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe if you are new. And I have lots of other videos with playlists on the channel that'll help you learn creative techniques to use with your new lens to help make your videos even better. And with that, I'll see you soon.